Hello, this is a part of IEEE 802.11 TQ video series on securitytube.net. In this video, I'll be talking more about initialization vector IV and a TKIP sequence counter TSC and how they are exactly used in TKIP. For finding the key stream, the earlier web standard also uses IV or initialization vector and TKIP also has IV but there are many implication changes and many enhancements in the IV space. Let's see all those enhancement and implication changes one by one. First and foremost change is the size of the IV. The size of initialization vector in web was just 24 by bits or 3 bytes and in TKIP it has been doubled to 48 bits or 6 bytes. Now IV is also having a secondary role as a sequence counter to avoid replay attacks. So in case of TKIP, one IV will be used only once per session. Once a session is established, established and session keys have been defined, a single IV will be used only once from any transmitter. That was not the case for the IVs in WEP web communication. Now key stream is constructed so as to avoid certain weak IVs. Now instead of directly appending the IV with the secret key, IVs are used to generate mixed keys and after generation of the mixed key, they are appended with the secret keys. So that the certain weak IVs will, also, will always get avoided. This figure shows how exactly the IV is appended to the key to form the key stream which is actually used for the encryption. Now the major constraint for TKIP is to use the old web architecture, old web hardware. So in old web hardware the 24 bit IV was simply appended to the key to form a key stream with the help of RC4 algorithm. Now in this figure the right hand side part shows the old web hardware. So he here is that 24 bit IV space and then 104 bits key. But now in this TKIP algorithm, the IV is not simply the IV uh, which is present as a clear text IV, but some key mixing is done before generating the per packet key as well as the IV. What is that key, st uh, what is that key mixing is this diagram. Uh, you must be knowing from my TKIP introduction slides, there are two parts of the IV. The upper IV space is 4 bytes or 32 bits and lower IV is 2 bytes or 16 bits. Now these lower order 2 bytes IVs are used in phase 2 while the upper order 4 bit, 4 bytes of IVs is used in phase 1. Now why this phase 1 and phase 2 uh, phase two are separated and why higher order are in phase 1 and lower order an, are in phase 2? The reason is simply computational simplicity. It is very well known that the higher order IVs will not be changing that frequently. But lower order IVs or last 2 bytes of the IVs are going to change very often. So if we use some key mixing, a separate key mixing for higher order IVs so that that computation can be done once and the same computational output can be used again and again and the phase 1 computation can be reasonably complex or slightly complex than phase 2 because phase 2 calculation has to be done again and again very frequently for every packet it has to be done. So in phase 1 key mixing, the higher order 4 bytes are taken as well as the MAC addresses that is source MAC address, destination MAC address and the session key. Now session key is generated from the pairwise master key. From this upper, I, uh, upper IV MAC address and session key phase 1 key mixing is done. The output of the phase 1 key mixing and the lower order 2 bytes of the IV are given as an input to the phase 2 key mixing and the output of phase 2 key mixing is finally used as a per packet key which is a 104 bit per packet key while for generating the first three bytes of the uh, concatenated, concatenated key the lower order two bytes are used as two IV bytes and the middle byte which is D is a dummy byte designed to avoid weak keys. You must be knowing 
that in web algorithm uh, there were some IVs which were weak IVs and in those weak IVs the middle byte was the main important byte which makes any IV weak or strong. So in TK to avoid that weak IV concept uh, dummy byte is added in between of the two IV bytes. As explained in the last slide IV or initialization vector is used to generate the key stream from the key. The IV has another implication in TKIP which is a TKIP sequence counter. IV is also used as a TKIP sequence counter. Web was not having any protection against the replay attacks. In TKIP IV is also used as a sequence counter to prevent any replay attacks. So TKIP uses concept of re uh, replay window to implement the counter. The receiver keeps track of the highest TSC or TKIP sequence counter along with the last 16 TSC values. This TKIP sequence counter is monotonically increasing function. Whenever a transmitter sends any packet, it increments the TSC and sends the packet. After successful delivery, it again increments the TSC and sends next packet. So when a new frame arrives at a receiver, it checks and classifies that frame into three categories. The first category is accept if the TSC counter or TKIP sequence counter is larger than the largest seen so far. It surely accept and it will give that frame to the higher layers. Second is reject if TSC is less than the value in the last largest 16 values it will simply reject that frame. And in window that is TSC is less than the largest but it is in between the those highest 16 so it will keep that frame in the window. So simply TSC counter is used as a TKIP sequence counter. Now TKIP sequence counter is the same IV bytes, 6 bytes are used. So every station and access point maintains the TKIP sequence counter and while transmitting any packet they increment the TKIP sequence counter and use that incremented TKIP sequence counter in the IV place while transmitting the packet. These counters are always reset when the temporal keys or new temporal keys are established. So per session these TKIP sequence counters are reset. So for every new session the TSC will start from zero and it will increase monotonically. The sequence counter is mixed with the temporal key. The temporal key is the key which is derived from pairwise master key which is a shared secret between transmitter and receiver. So for generating the RC4 seed TKIP sequence counter is taken, temporal key is taken and along with that the transmitter and receiver MAC addresses are also taken to generate the RC4 seed key. On reception the receiver will demix the key and it will check that the resulting counter is indeed greater than all the sequence counter packets it has seen and only if the, se the received TKIP sequence counter is greater than the greatest TSC value seen it will accept the packet and the, this whole mechanism prevents TKIP algorithm from replay attacks. So the IV or the TSC is having two important implications. The IV or TSC is used while generating the key stream from the key. It is used as a RC4 seed as well as TSC is a monotonically increasing function. So for replay protection TSC or IV is used. These are the two main implications or of TSC and IV. Thank you. That's it for this video. In next video I'll be talking more about how encryption and how decryption is actually takes place in TKIP. Thank you.